Mid lane has and always will have some of the highest impact of any role in the game. The reason why is simple, mid has without a doubt the highest champion diversity in the game with countless viable playstyles. Likewise, it's in the middle of the map so you have tons of options for agency, being able to be at every objective fight, every invade, every roam, and every tower dive. But with so many options for how to play and what to do, it is without a doubt the most overwhelming role in the game. There's a reason that despite the role being so influential, lower elo players get lost and don't know how to carry games. We'll be testing you in this guide to find out, are you a bad mid laner that gets caught in the pitfalls of the role, or are you a good mid laner that knows how to abuse its strengths? Let's find out. The first thing a good mid laner will do is that they'll always be selfish and play for themselves. There is no team in mid, only I, and as far as a good mid laner is concerned, they are the team. At least, that's the mentality you should have if you're looking to climb. I mean, just think about it. The only common factor across all your games is that you're playing them. So if you learn to consistently get yourself ahead in game, you'll be able to climb higher than ever. But this is easier said than done. Remember, you're in the middle of the map, so you're constantly bombarded with pings to go to every single play, not unlike a jungler. And one of the most important things you need to learn to become a selfish, good mid laner is to be able to say no. To show you what I mean, we'll be looking at a game I played in Master Elo. In this game, I'm extremely ahead having taken the enemy's mid tower by myself after winning lane. This means that whatever play I choose to go to will be heavily favored for me and my team. And this is also when I start getting suggestion pings from my team. My support pings me to go bot lane after both him and my ADC have died. And I'm thinking, no way man, I'm staying very far away from that. And right now you might be wondering, what am I so scared of? Well, first of all, we saw earlier that Annie went into fog as I was walking back to lane. Secondly, my bot laners just died, which means I'll have no follow-up, making my roam a 2 vs 4 scenario at best. And third, the path to bot lane is completely dark. I have no clue if I'll run into a Soraka Silence, a Rengar stun, Annie ult, whatever. It's the only way I can lose my lead. It doesn't matter how low they are if they just CC and one-shot me with vision advantage. Combining all these facts lets me know one thing, that if I go to that fight, I'll be outnumbered, and outnumbered fights are are almost always losing, so I'll most likely end up throwing my lead. And people will always try to bait you with pings like these in solo queue, either because they're emotional or they just don't know what's good for the game state. They even try to bait me a second time by pinging dragon, but that fight is bad for the exact same reasons I didn't go bot to coin flip a cleanup play. As soon as you think that a play is bad, first say no and then don't change your mind about it. Then ask yourself, what can you do instead? The three best options are to roam to the opposite side, hit plates, or recall in that order. If you can't roam, you go for plates. If you can't hit plates, then you recall and spend your gold so you'll be stronger for the next play. At first, it'll be hard to know when to be selfish and say no to sus plays, but once you get used to the selfish mentality, you'll start taking control of your games and climbing will become so much easier. And often, the reason why players listen to their teammates' pings is simply because they genuinely don't know what else to do. And if that sounds like you, then I highly recommend you check out our mid lane course on macro at skillcap.com. It will teach you everything you should be looking to do as a mid laner from roaming, when to roam, countering roams, warding, it's got you covered. Pair that up with our course that teaches you how to play every single mid lane matchup and you'll be a mid lane demon in no time. At Skillcap we have the highest number of courses on the internet covering literally everything you could ever want to know about league in every role so there's something for everyone. The best part though, our service is completely risk free to try as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcap then you get your your money back, no questions asked. So click the link in the description below to start improving fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, now back to the guide. So one mistake I always see bad mid laners make is that they're too aggressive all the time. The right amount of aggression wins you games, and that's how good mid laners will be able to solo kill their opponents. But on the other hand, being over aggressive is a one way ticket to losing LP. When you play aggro, you're often using important cooldowns, leaving you vulnerable to ganks. That's why the key to winning games is timing your aggression around vision and game state, and we'll be showing you exactly how to do that. Let's take a look at an early laning phase from a gold Karthus. So far, this Karthus is laning pretty well, harassing his melee opponent with his range advantage. This is good aggression that you want to see in your own games. However, Karthus immediately makes a huge mistake for the next 15 seconds that he could have fixed at any time. And this mistake is that he didn't secure vision after securing the shove and health advantage. Right now, Karthus has absolutely no clue where the enemy jungler is, and there's a very high chance he'll get ganked. His HP and shove lead means nothing if he gets ganked, and this uncontrolled aggression is a mistake that you guys might be making in your own games. So, how could Karthus have fixed this mistake? Well, obviously he should have just warded, right? Well, it's not actually that simple. 
In League of Legends, there is one specific war timing that you should memorize if you're serious about climbing. When the clock hits 240 on the top right corner of every League game, junglers have the perfect timing to gank a lane. This is because at around 240, junglers will have cleared three camps on one side of the map, meaning they can either gank a side lane and recall to the other side, or they can cross through mid while looking for a gank. More often than not, this gank timer affects mid laners the most because ganking side lanes after three camps is pretty cheap since they'd be slowing down their full clear. Because of this 240 timing, you're going to want to ward any time from 120 before minions meet until 225 at the latest. If you ward any later than this, there's a 50-50 chance that you're just going to end up walking into the enemy jungler, so make sure to ward earlier. Now, using what we just learned, let's see how Karthus should have played it. He could have warded at the earliest timing of 120, but you should avoid this when you're the champion with shove. This is because warding later means you can hug the side you warded for longer, giving you an extra minute to play aggressive. So, let's see how many ward timings Karthus missed that could have won his lane for him. There's one at 146 right after the first three melees get farmed, another one at 157 right after the caster minions are cleared, and then finally one at 222 when the casters are killed. If you're wondering why he should have warded on those specific timers, it's because the aggro changes from low health minions to full health minions, so you won't miss any CS in the time it takes to ward. So, by temporarily not playing aggressive and taking 5 seconds to ward, you can play aggressive for the next 90 seconds without having to worry about dying to a jungle gank. And although we use the specific 240 gank timing to teach this concept, you can apply it to any time you don't have at least one ward around mid. If you can't find a good timing to ward, worst case, give up one minion and use that time to ward so you can play to win your lane without any risk. Another thing that good mid laners do is that they understand how to win their lane, or at least go even, no matter the matchup. We'll be looking at a pretty classic counter matchup, Akali versus LeBlanc. In this lane, Akali shouldn't be able to win any trades pre-6 while LeBlanc should have an easy time with her high early game damage. However, this isn't the average solo queue Akali. This is Poe Belter, someone who's been a professional challenger mid laner for nearly half his life. Needless to say, he understands mid lane pretty well by now, and even when countered, he's able to win lane by just abusing this one laning fun fundamental. In these first few levels, try to identify the one advantage Akali has over LeBlanc. We'll give you a hint. Think about the main difference between LB's W and Akali's Q. And the answer is cooldowns. The reason Akali was able to solo kill LB is because his champion's Q cooldown is 10 times shorter than LeBlanc's W cooldown at level 1. And this concept of playing around cooldown differences applies to every matchup in the game. Just think about it. Let's say there's an Annie versus Lissandra in the mid lane. Annie's Q cooldown is always going to be 4 seconds the whole game, but Lissandra's Q scales down from 8 to 4 seconds with more levels. If you're the Annie, you'd want to fight all the time since you basically have double the damage of your opponent early. And in order to know these cooldown differences so you can plan trades around them, all it takes is a quick search on the league wiki to find out what yours and the enemy's cooldowns are. And let's see exactly how Poe Belter used this concept to win his lane. First, he noticed that LeBlanc started Q, a 6 second cooldown ability compared to his 1.5. This means if LeBlanc ever messes up her positioning, he can just chase her down since she hasn't ranked W yet. However, LeBlanc still has the auto range advantage, so he doesn't brute force anything since that would be a losing trade. Instead, he farms safely and finds timers to trade Q for Q and auto for auto, which is always a win for a Doran shield user. It's not until LB makes a crucial cooldown management mistake that Pobelter is able to seal the deal. Remember, everything is about cooldowns here. Pobelter knows that LeBlanc wants to trade with her W as soon as she unlocks it, but LeBlanc's base W cooldown is 18 seconds, meaning that if she uses it, she's kind of just an auto attacking Q bot until it comes back up. LeBlanc wasting her W recklessly here is the exact same concept as when a Syndra randomly throws out her stun and misses, or when an Ari misses a charm instead of holding onto these important abilities. Knowing his opponent is about to make this lane losing mistake, Pobelter prepares to take an even better trade before LeBlanc actually throws his cooldown out. He runs straight towards the minion wave, ignoring LeBlanc's W damage and knowing he'll get more damage back once he's moved further up. Even if this doesn't end in a kill, taking this good trade will make it much easier for him to pressure and farm in an unfavorable matchup. In fact, the kill is very far from guaranteed here. The reason LeBlanc dies is because she disrespected the shroud, but chances are your opponents will make similar mistakes if even challenger players misplay like this. And in this game, Akali did end up getting a kill by catching his opponent off guard with a cooldown that I wasn't even thinking about when I first observed this lane, his rune, Electrocute. And not only does this cooldown concept apply to abilities and runes, but also to summoner spells like Flash and Ignite too. In this challenger laning phase, both laners are down Flash and they're both aware of this, being challenger and all. Azir was farming peacefully until he noticed that Akali used both of his escape tools to farm. This means that Azir is 
clears up a gap closer and a whole ton of damage due to this cooldown discrepancy. And you see a situation that normally would never happen play out. An Azir solo kills an Akali. You might have thought that some champs are always weak early or unplayable if countered, but if you learn how cooldowns work, any matchup can be won, or at the very least, neutralized. And finally, something that bad mid laners always do is that they try too hard to become the jungler. Mid lane has so much game impact because of the ability to roam, but bad mids will tunnel on this aspect of the role and end up griefing their own lane as a result. In short, bad mids will constantly over roam. Let's take a look at some super common mistakes that you're probably making in your own games. In this game, Orianna just got back to lane and was peacefully farming when she noticed that her lane opponent TP'd bot lane. Long story short, Ori got griefed by her teammates. They played horribly and gave her lane opponent a free triple kill, and there's nothing she could have done to stop her teammates from trolling her. Understandably, anyone in Ori's position would be angry right now. I certainly would be. But only a bad mid laner would make the situation worse by rage roaming like this Ori does. Ori tries to kill LeBlanc after the play is already over, but ends up failing to do so and even gets punished for it. On the other hand, if Orianna had just stayed and shoved mid, she would gain one guaranteed advantage over her opponent an EXP lead. LeBlanc committed to her TP play, meaning that she is guaranteed to not be mid lane for the next 30 or so seconds. This means that Ori can play the lane 1v0 and shove as hard as she can, gaining free gold and EXP while also denying LeBlanc minions if she crashes it to tower. Now, in Diamond and Below, you might be pleasantly surprised if you commit to shoving and your opponent chooses not to base after making their play. Let's say that LeBlanc was 70 HP or lower after making her play, and decides to walk back to lane. Well, since Ori stayed in lane, she can zone her poker from re-entering lane using her positioning advantage. Advantage. Not to mention, LeBlanc wouldn't have used her gold at all, meaning Ori would be at an absolute advantage, making it easier to harass and eventually kill her. But even if your opponent doesn't make the mistake of walking to mid after the play, you'll still have a timer to play aggro by staying in lane and shoving. Kills from roaming give a lot of gold, but they don't give nearly as much EXP as minions do. This means that LeBlanc would always be playing catch up to Ori's levels. When Ori is level 6, LeBlanc would be level 5. And when Ori is level 7, LeBlanc would be level 6. And so on and so forth. This level advantage may not seem like much, but it's worth just as much as the triple kill LB got if Ori plays her cards right. One level gives you damage and tanky stats worth about 1k gold, which would completely neutralize LB's lead from roaming. So, in a lot of cases, the best place to not match the roam. Of course, we aren't telling you to never roam. That would make a bad mid laner into a horrible mid laner. However, some general rules to follow are to never roam to a lane that has no follow-up, and don't roam to a lane with a bad wave state. In terms of follow-up, you want to make sure your teammates are actually able to do something if you roam. If they're in base, too low to do anything, or too far from the enemy, then you'd be opting into a solo play, which means your roam isn't actually creating any real pressure. For wave states, there's two perfect scenarios for ganking. The first of which is when your side laners have shoved a wave and they're about to crash it under enemy tower, opening up the tower dive option. And the second scenario where you're the first to move out of mid lane and the enemies are shoved up near your bot tower. Without both follow up and a good wave state to roam to, you're better off just farming mid and playing for solo kills instead. And if you want to learn more about roaming, then you can always watch our master in minutes course for mid lane macro that has everything you need to know about roaming fundamentals. And by the way, trying out our service is completely risk-free as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So click the link in the description below to start improving fast and get the rank you've always wanted. All right, and that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.